Gentlemen, thanks for joining us, coach and players. Uh, first and foremost, congratulations, Clinton, the birth into the Col men's college world series finals. If you could give us a uh, a quick opening statement about today's game. Yeah, I'm still trying to grasp what happened. Um, you know, we we got hustle and bustle there with with y'all putting on three games, and thank goodness it's it's going fairly well. Three games in one day is tough, but a heck of a day to have in Omaha, and uh, us being the sandwich game. Like I said. I, I think uh, it's one of the weirdest games I've ever been a part of. Uh, maybe we came out on the winning end because we have one of the weirdest pitchers I've ever been around and Xander, and he threw the ball really well and led us into the battle uh, the way that he should. But both teams struck a bunch of balls very well. Uh, both teams made some great defensive plays, and both teams have explosive lineups that kind of leave you on the edge of your seat, at least where I was standing. Uh, so hopefully the fans felt that way too and got their money's worth. And if you're a Florida State fan, you obviously got your money's worth all year long, uh, in particular the year that it was for them remembering a legend as their former coach. Thank you, Coach. We'll open now for questions for the players. Yeah. Blake, can you just walk us through that double play that got you out of the third inning? Was that the one where I stepped on the bag and threw it over? Yeah. Um, honestly, not, I've had a couple of those plays this year where uh, I messed up by, by hitting the runner, throwing the second, and uh, he could tell me about clearing the lane, and uh, you know I could touch the base, threw it over, had a lane, and Dean was there to tag him out. Think you had it in time before the run, think you had it in time before the run was going to score when it happened live? I have no clue. Questions for the players right here. Matt Towery from World Baseball Network. Xander, to keep at bed with six of the third innings, striking out three batters with the 25 batters you faced of the FSU offense. What, what was just the chemistry you and Stark had today that got you clicking on all cylinders? Uh, well, watching some of the games that FSU was playing, I knew they were going to be aggressive and kind of they're obviously an aggressive offense. They're loaded throughout. And I noticed that, and I was like, you know what, we're just going to attack. And if they swing first pitch, they swing first pitch. But, yeah, Stark and I, I mean, we talk a little bit, but not too, too much. But it's more during the game that we talk and figure out stuff. But overall, great dude, and I'm glad we got the win today. Go back. Another question. Xander, what was it like facing this Tennessee lineup back in the fall? <laughs> I mean, yeah, speechless, I guess. I mean, you know, I remember in the fall World Series, it was kind of like that. Uh, Simo took me over the wall at the Smokey Stadium. And uh, obviously, facing Burke, we like to joke that one person has each other each day. Either he goes two for two, or I get him out twice. So it's a little bit in between. And you have Billy there. I mean, Clemson transfer. I mean, you know, he's he's a threat. I mean, it, we're just loaded throughout the lineup. And obviously, it, it prepares you for moments like this, especially with FSU's lineup. You kind of think back to the fall and how you got, you know, for example, how I got Burke out or Billy out. And you just put that forth and compete with what you got. Xander, I guess this would be the second consecutive game you all have had a center fielder just kind of try to run through the wall. I mean, when you're on the mound, is it? I mean, I'm sure you want to win anyway, but does that put a little juice in you at that point? Yeah, I mean, KT's catch today kind of set the tone, especially when it was in the first inning. And I know our offense scored in the top of the first, but I mean, he set the tone right there. I mean, Dingus hit a good ball, or Dingus, or however you say his last name. But you know, it's it's hard. But, uh, you know, he, he put he put a good swing on it. I mean, he hit it at 1,000 miles an hour out there. But KT running the wall kind of set the tone for the day. You say that dude's name wrong. He could rip you in half. <laughs> yeah, but there, there's, there's one <laughs> guy that we won't talk about. Any other questions for the players? Well, one more right here. Blake, what, what, walk us through the pitch, if you could, on that home run. Just kind of I know you, you've been, you know, barreling up a couple and finally got that one elevated. What 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 was – what was that pitch, and what were you looking for? Um, first couple of pitches, he threw me a couple of fastballs, and then a changeup, and then out of nowhere through that slider, and it was nasty. It was a back foot slider, and I kind of told him like good pitch, so I, I kind of did that just so I can get it again, you know, because I knew it was coming, and um, I fouled the fastball off, and I, I kind of knew that that pitch was coming, so I was I was prepared for it, and I got my barrel on it. Gentlemen, congrats on the victory. Now uh, you can be excused. Good job, 
We'll open for questions starting right here with Coach. Yeah, Tony. After getting close the, the last few years, what's what's the emotions like for you and now getting a getting a chance to take this team into the championship series? Yeah, it's kind of hard. Um, you know, there's a lot of hustle and bustle, like I said, after the game, um, and then also you want to manage it as well as you can. Um, you know, it's interesting the position we put ourselves in. Kirby, Snead, Combs, and there's others too, but those have kind of been our, our main three guys, are fresh as a daisy, um, you know, if you're watching Tombstone. And uh, Xander's just throwing the heck out of it and got a really low pitch count. So um, just kind of want to always make sure I'm doing my part and putting these guys in a good position to succeed. But Xander wouldn't let you take the ball out of his hand today, and, and we, we decided to utilize, utilize those guys. So that's just kind of where my head's at, I guess. It's not a great answer. Um, but – you know, it is cool to see a cultivation of just like Burke's development and Kirby being a mainstay of this program and Xander, his contribution over. So there's uh, we can always say before something happens, something happens. And there's been a lot of build up into the successes we've had this year and the failures, too, to be honest with you. And it's, it's just been fun to be a part of. And as far as my emotions, I, I'm kind of at the point where I'm just following these guys. Um, there's certain tasks that I have to do and um, there's direction that I give them and they'll listen. But. Kind of following them right now makes it nice. Sorry, we'll go one and two. You talked about the game being weird, but just how significant was getting out of that third inning unscathed, and and how kind of peculiar was that sequence? Yeah, it was nuts. Um, you know, I, I'm not even quite sure what happened on Dean's play. He made such a good play. He got a great first step on the ball. He made an error on. He got a great first step too. It was almost too good. He was moving so fast, and um, you know what happened happened, but. He put himself in a great position to go to option A or option B, and you always take option A as, you know, protecting home plate. Um, and then the next play, just an outstanding job by Xander of keeping his composure. And then um, as much as we'd like to take back either a couple errors or, you know, we did give up a few free bases, uh, which is, you know, not necessarily – well, I guess one. Um, the guys played really good defense. I mean, KT's catch was, was incredible, and there's an exclamation point on – I think you guys were the ones that asked me earlier in the year, can he play center field? The guy went, Jordan Beck did it too. He, the coach tells you you can't do something, and you need to bow up. Um, you need to be respectful to the coach, but you need to bow up to the situation. And he's been a maniac in the outfield during BP. I grew up watching Willie McGee, and he was so good defensively, but if you ever were able to go to BP, it kind of all started there. I mean, he treated BP like a game, and that's how KT is. And um, and he can play any of those three spots as well as anybody I feel in our conference is at least what I know well, maybe even the country. Yep. I want to ask about that third inning, too, the play that Dean made and the play that Blake made. You talk a lot about maturity. Are those the type of plays that, that a mature baseball team makes this time of year? Yeah, I mean, Dean will give you a smirk, and, um, you know, there are a few things that go in the freshman category, but he's oddly mature for his age and, and physically mature, too. But by this point in the season, you should kind of be a sophomore if you're a freshman. Um, and then, you know, I don't know how many postseason games Blake has been able to be a part of as, as well as others. And even Xander um, didn't get to pitch here last year, but he's seen so many of them and now been a part of them too. It benefits you. And again, I would say, I mean, you can do something for the first time and still have success. Um, but I, I think there's some contributions there for sure. Uh, of our guys kind of relying on the past to be mature and have experience and know what to do in different situations. But the other thing is, too, I'm very blessed with a support staff that's insanely good. Um, we've stuck together uh, regardless of what goes on, good, bad. Maybe I, I'll make a snide comment here and there, but we've stuck together and incredibly close. And, and from my standpoint, why we're close is because I, I, I want to win. And um, I think we do have success because of those guys. And in turn, these players, this group of players will listen as well as, as – I can't think of a group that compares to it. They'll, they'll listen as well as anyone. So that to me is mature, is taking direction, you know, even though you are an experienced player or you're really talented or whatever it might be. And I feel like the guys given direction are really good. Tony, I guess kind of careers and seasons with everybody kind of evolve and, and take turns and all that stuff – the past four or five starts for Seacrest have been big spots with something on the line, and they've all been good. Like, at what point did you think that he couldn't just be a weekend guy but be this kind of guy? I think when, um, you know, 
Again, Blake mentioned he's he's made some mistakes on a particular play, um, and he bounces back. And I, I kind of wanted to answer for him there. Um, you know, the homer came after an at bat where he had a guy at third base and one out, and you know that's a pretty dang good spot for Blake Burke to be in. Uh, having said that, if you go back, Oxford might have thrown his very best three pitches all in one at bat to Blake. But to me, I think he hit the ball so hard the next AB because he was determined to have a, a bounce back at bat. Um, and I think Xander. Um, being frustrated with me a couple different times where he came out of the game earlier than he should have. Again, you bow up. I mean, I've never had a day in my life where Xander's anywhere close to being disrespectful to me, but he, there's a way you do it on the field where you show this is what I can do. And uh, the old actions speak louder than words. So I think there's many examples with this team. I mentioned it with KT's defense too, where it doesn't go as well as the guys want. Um, Nate Sneed was not in the top five or six guys in the fall. He was very unhappy. He showed it on his face, and we talked about it, and he went to work. And I, I think that's a big part of, of where we're at right now. Eric, we're there and there. Going back to the preseason or even in the fall, did you anticipate this team having the power numbers that they have? Um, no, but I don't know that I've applied myself in that manner. Coach Elander will. Um, and uh, it's because it's – near and dear to his heart. He did it. He knows how to do it. He works on it with the guys. Uh, but it's never a huge stressor. I mean, look at today. I mean, how many home runs could you argue were hit on a day where the wind's blowing out or playing in a smaller park? Um, so sometimes it doesn't happen for you the way that you want. But um, we knew our guys would take consistently good swings. We knew they were very physical. Um, and we knew we'd have some depth. And, you know, Reese didn't have the best day today. But it's kind of nice being able to put Ensley in that DH spot and feel good about it. Yeah, I think after the sixth inning, uh, Xander had 66 pitches and Florida State's guys had 120. It was similar to what happened against North Carolina the other night, too. I'm curious how much you think the, the pitch selection, the way you guys work counts, has, has contributed to the success hitting all season, but especially here. Yeah, it's, it's another thing. Uh, I mean, I don't know where we stack up with walk totals and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily stressed, but it is stressed to have competitive at-bats throughout. And if you take pitches off, um, you may get away with it in your at-bat, or your day may look good on the box score, but maybe you're hurting the guys behind you. And uh, some of those at-bats were not necessarily productive, again, on the stat sheet. But I, I do think when everyone in the lineup hooks it up, then – it just makes everybody better, you know. Some greater than the parts is is the cliche I used the other day, and I, I think it fits with this group in particular. And uh, it's been really fun to see. I'm, I'm kind of staring now. You know, the top of the order was really good today, um, but as I've said before, there's there's parts of the year where it's more just the middle, the bottom, and it alternates. And it, it, again, it makes it a headache for the other team, kind of like they were for us up and down the lineup. You know, Alex hits at Homer, and Cantu did as well. Um, it's it's nice to have that weapon on offense. Coach, again, congratulations. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, exactly. We can't. We gotta. <laughs> we're gonna. We're find some.